Hello, everyone. The poem brought you today is "Charm of a Maiden Singer" by Su Shi, translated by Xu Yuanchong. The endless river eastern flows with its huge waves are gone. All those gallant heroes of bygone years, west of the ancient fortress appears, Red Cliff, where General Zhou won his early fame. When the three kingdoms were in flame. Rocks tower in the air, and waves beat on the shore, rolling up a thousand heaps of snow. To match the land so fair, how many heroes of yore had made great show! I fancy General Zhou at the height of his success, with a plume fan in hand, and a silk hood so brave and bright, laughing and jesting with his bride so fair. While enemy ships were destroyed as planned, like castles in the air, should their souls revisit this land, sentimental, his bride would laugh to say, "Younger than they, I have hair turned gray. Life is but a dream. O、oh、moon, I drink to you who have seen them on the stream." Now the original Chinese text. 大江东去，浪淘尽。千古风流人物，孤垒西边人道士，三国周郎赤壁，乱世穿空，惊涛拍岸，卷起千堆雪，江山如画，一时多少豪杰。遥想公瑾当年，小乔出嫁了，雄姿英发，羽扇纶巾，谈笑间，樯橹灰飞烟灭。故国神游，多情应笑我，早生华发。人生如梦，一尊还酹江月。In this poem, the poet praises General Zhou Yu, who defeated the strong northern army by setting their warships on fire at the Red Cliff in 208 A.D. There is a genre in Chinese poetry called huai gu shi, or poems that are written in memory of historical events or figures. These poems usually contain vocabularies and descriptions related with historical events and people that would otherwise be difficult to understand without knowing the background. Here, General Zhou or Zhou Yu, the main character in this poem, is a heroic figure in the Three Kingdoms era, who lived between 175 to 210 A.D. He was the general of one of the kingdoms called Dongwu, and he had exceptional military knowledge and capabilities. Not only was he famous for military talents, he was also Uh, documented to have great talents for music and was known for being very handsome and attractive. The line west of the ancient fortress appears, Red Cliff, where General Zhou won his early fame, refers to the War of the Red Cliff that took place between the Northern Army of Cao Cao and the Southern Joint Army of Sun Quan and Liu Bei, led by Zhou Yu and Zhuge Liang, who eventually won the victory of the war. After the war, the three kingdoms gradually established a balance of power among them. So, why did Su Shi write this poem? It was written when Su Shi was 45 years old and again in exile. His exile destination this time was close to the ancient war field of the Red Cliff. So, Su Shi traveled there and wrote down this poem. Just like most of the Chinese poems, the poet started with depicting the majestic view of the Red Cliff by the Yangtze River to create a historic and vast stage for readers to imagine. He then associates the heroism of Zhou Yu with the spectacular scenery of the river and the waves hitting against the rock. The poet not only envies the heroic. Charisma of General Zhou, but actually also the fact that he was able to exert influence and apply the talents to help his kingdom to make achievements that would be recorded by history. Su Shi was not able to do so because his political views were against the popular reformist views at that time, and he was punished by the emperor for it. At the age of 45, Su Shi has grown some gray hair, and he was grieving over the fact that he might be too old to realize the ambitions he had. 
So the last sentence, life is but a dream. O、oh、moon, I drink to you who have seen them on the stream, is not consistent with his optimistic style that we had read before, but appears to be more despair and sad. This is only my personal view, but it seems like in most Chinese poems, in memory of historical events. We can always sense a touch of sadness in these poems. This is probably due to the fact that Chinese people have this tradition of documenting history, and in front of thousands of years of history and historical figures come and go, it is inevitable to realize just how powerless human beings are sometimes,、um, especially in a turbulent era. I would say that it is sadness, yes, but probably this kind of mentality makes it easier to let go of your personal emotions and simply live the moment. As a fan of history myself, I love this poem for the words it uses, which so easily trigger imagination of the ancient war field in my mind. It also resonates with anyone with ambitions, but might feel that time is running short. Hope you like this poem as much as I do, and I'll see you next time.